For all those who appreciate the work that we're doing here on Standing for Truth, please hit that subscribe button because we are just getting started. I find a lot of times there are the different camps within the evolutionary community are arguing against each other. And I've noticed you point that out in your books, Dr. Sarfati, including, I think, Refuting Evolution, where you are pointing out that they're both wrong. I think one example I use is, for instance, uh, you got the... Um origin of birds that it happened from the ground up the cursorial running theory of running dinosaurs evolving flight or did it happen from gliders coming down from the tree right. the arboreal theory and both of them actually raise very uh, devastating arguments to the other side and i think both the objections are right both sets are right that birds it's didn't evolve from dinosaurs they didn't evolve from tree dwellers they didn't evolve in the first place well, it's really, really common now, Dr. Sarfati. You you might have noticed it now, too. The evolutionists are just pretty much saying that birds are dinosaurs. Oh, yes. Is is there any validity to, to the way they just kind of assert that like it's a fact? Well, I mean, there's a lot of differences between dinosaurs and birds. You see, if you look at the hip bone of a dinosaur, there's a hollow there. It's, it's a, 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 they wear the three hip bones they fuse. It's called the acetabulum. That's where the femur goes in articulates and in dinosaurs uniquely they have a hollow thing there while other creatures that's a, it's a solid it's shaped, shaped like a vinegar cup it's called it the acetabulum which means little vinegar cup in uh, in latin you see that's um so every other thing has a solid thing there it's a, it's a, a cup shaped thing dinosaurs have a hole there that's one big difference Another one is that dinosaurs have their center of gravity on hind legs because they're very good runners. In fact, that's what natural selection would select for is being the best runner you have, which means you have to have the most muscle mass there. While birds have most of their muscle mass in their upper body for their flight. So you can't go from the, the, this uh, bottom heavy creature to a top heavy creature. So there's a major uh, anatomical change. And then you've got things like the feathers themselves. I mean, feathers are an incredibly well-designed thing. You've got the barb and you've got the, the, the central shaft. And you've got barbs. You've got hooks and ridges that connect it to, to make a flight surface. I mean, the feather itself is a, is a different thing. And even the lunging structure is different because the dinosaurs presumably had a bellows-type lung, but the birds have a flow-through through type lung where the air goes in one direction, the blood vessels go in the opposite direction, it's called counter current exchange, very efficient, but it's a very different um, design from what reptiles had. And how do you go from one to the other? Because the intermediate stage would have to have a hole in the lung. It's wow. called a diaphragmatic hernia, and that, that would not be very good for the animal. Because natural selection can't tell you, well, in a million years, you're going to be a bird. Right. I deal with what you've got now. What you've got now is a diaphragmatic hernia, and you're going to die. <laughs> exactly. yeah, so there's a few things there i mean in fact um joel taylor and i are writing that dinosaur book we're talking about and we've got a, uh, two chapters on the dinosaur bird issue one oh, is on, awesome. on the general theory the others are, are looking at some of the candidates they bring up and dr Doug brian thomas from icr and i wrote a, a paper on this as well pointing out the differences um, I'm, saying, I mean, by the way, I'm not saying that the bible tells you there aren't any feathered dinosaurs i'm not saying that because the bible doesn't tell you that much right Okay, so it, it may well be a feather dinosaur. I'm just not convinced by the usual uh, the candidates they, they put up. or uh, And I certainly don't believe that birds evolve from dinosaurs. That's not true at all. They're definitely right. separate creations. And, and you brought up so many phenomenal points. I'm, I'm glad that we actually touched on that because you, you do hear that all the time. And what you just oh, said yeah. was, uh, was was great. It, it brings me to a, a video that you and uh, Dr. Carter released. I think it might have been a couple of weeks ago that I recommend everybody watch. I like what you said there. 
in that the Bible doesn't really say one way or another if, if dinosaurs had feathers, but you personally, who it really sounds like you, you've dug deep into this issue. You're not convinced then, uh, Dr. Sarfati, that the examples they purport really are that of feathered dinosaurs. Well, I mean, we've got some dinosaurs which, which we've got, got to, they're so well preserved, which shows it goes back to the, the flood as a reality. Some dinosaurs are so well preserved, we have the skin and the skin has scales. We can tell what shape the scales are. Not feathers, it's quite clearly scaled skin. Right. So yeah, that's you have them, and then you have things which uh, look are probably uh, collagen fibers, and then you find the same sort of thing on on pterosaurs and dolphins, which clearly did not have feathers. So, if we can have the same things on non feathered creatures, we shouldn't necessarily be jumping to the conclusion that there were feathers on the dinosaurs. Here's uh, a question that came in. People are mm -hmm. loving your answer to the birds or dinosaurs. I think it's something people need to hear about. Um, I'm not 100% certain about a feathered dinosaur paper. Well, I know what he's talking about. It's interesting, though, that this McLean for the dinosaur paper published in the ICC was was published after our paper. And I think, um, in fact, if you look at it, there's a comment on the, if you look at the ta uh, the, the um, article that, that Dr. Thomas and I wrote, um, Feathered Dinosaur Debate, there was a comment on that article about uh, this paper and we replied, and also my colleague, Joel Tate, who's co-author of the dinosaur book, but he replied, because he actually was at the ICC, he read both papers, and the problem with the, that ICC paper, it didn't address the leading creationist critics or even the leading evolutionist critics of the feathered dinosaur theory. Well, see, our paper actually addressed the best arguments from the other side. Their paper basically ignored the best arguments. I think some of my a paper, a little article of mine I wrote 20 years ago was, was um, um, addressed it was a very small article but not the papers i've written since then like the one with dr thomas and the one i wrote with dr carter in 2015 they were ignored but a little article i wrote 20 years ago now we're looking from people like alan Fiducia, who's written the whole thing about feathered right. uh, a whole book on feathered dinosaurs and why they don't work that was ignored would you the leading experts in, in actual uh, fossil birth, the paleoanthropologists, no, paleo ornithologists, they seem to be quite skeptical of the feathered dinosaur idea. It's, it's non ornithologists who seem to be pushing the feathered dinosaur idea. Right. Well, because even now they're depicting, you know, we all know Jurassic Park and the Tyrannosaurus mm. Rex, but right. now you see depictions of Tyrannosaurus just as a big feathered dinosaur it looks totally different than, than past interpretations. So would you say that a lot of that is inference assumptions and not really based on empirical science? Well, especially Kirk? when I think have found mum, uh, some, some impressions of Tyrannosaurus skin. I mean, I think uh, when the skin's quite clearly scaly, I think that's going a bit far. Right, yeah. that's a good point. So the reason why maybe they're ignoring some of those arguments is because they don't have a, a really solid rebuttal to it then it's quite possible yeah i mean uh, uh we've actually said well okay how about you find a creature that has an open uh, acetabulum a perforate acetabulum it's called but also has unequivocal feathers find that for us i mean we're not saying the bible doesn't rule those things out we, we, we said that in our paper i've set up with dr the, the video with dr carter that you talked about but find one. I mean, don't just say it's possible. Uh, uh, tell us that it actually is actual, not just possible. So that means I'm gathering that when they point to like so-called transitionals, like Archaeopteryx, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I'm probably, I, yeah. maybe I'm butchering that one. Are these just true birds then? Or what well, would be the uh, Archaeopteryx is a true bird. I mean, had uh, you see the things about, about true birds they have. I mean, Archaeopteryx had a fully a full uh, a flying wing. It had flight feathers, which are asymmetrical, just like flight feathers should be. It had a movable maxilla. You know, you've got a mandible, the lower jaw. The maxilla is just part of your skull, but the birds have a movable maxilla, the upper jaw as well. And the Archaeopteryx had that. So there's again the the the, the uh, head, the skull, uh, even its sensation or organs of a bird, its flight feathers of a bird. It also had a perching foot too. So you, you could tell from the, the claws that it had a perching foot. It was a, as a perching bird, not a feathered dinosaur. Now, Sinosauropteryx, I think, was actually a dinosaur. It had it seemed to have a bellows type lung. It had the weight on the hindquarters, and, and the the evidence for feathers is is, is equivocal in the, in the extreme. So those are two of the main ones that we discuss in our paper, and also the book that Doctor that Joel Taylor and I are writing. 
That's all. I, I got to say, I'm excited for that book. 